All right, so I'm going to talk about a project that I've been working on, collecting crowdsourced bathymetry data using electronic charting systems. So a lot of people look at bathymetry, and this is all they see. They see a map. They see a pretty picture. But in essence, there's a lot more to bathymetry. It's an integral part of the global ocean system. It steers ocean circulation. It provides a foundation for uh, underwater habitats. And it is an impact for navigation and commerce, vessel traffic, and safety. But if you look at the map and you look at uh, where we have data coverage, there's a, essentially a lack of bathymetric coverage globally. Estimates vary, but there's a general consensus that less than 20% of the global ocean has been mapped. So one way that we can uh, fill in these gaps is through crowdsourcing. And so there's a lot of organizations that are excited about crowdsourcing and looking into it. The General Bathymetric Chart of the Oceans, or JEBCO organization, has recently endorsed an uh, initiative to map the global oceans by the year 2030. This is an initiative will rely heavily on crowdsourced data. There are also a lot of maritime groups, uh, captains, uh, you know, different types of, of maritime groups that are also actively engaged in, in, in the data for the water uh, in the areas that they, they, trans that they, uh, that they transverse. So wouldn't it be great if all these ships out there were all collecting and contributing data? Hydrographic agencies are another organizations that are um, looking into the benefits of crowdsourced bathymetry. Uh, they're not looking at this data as a replacement for survey quality data, but as a steady stream of data that they can use for survey planning, reconnaissance, determining chart adequacy, or ground truthing other data types like satellite derived bathymetry. So the IHO, the International Hydrographic Organization, uh, has a data center for digital bathymetry, which is co-located at NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information, where I work in Boulder, Colorado. And it was established in 1988 to be a repository for uh, bath bathymetric data from all the IHO member states. So naturally, this was a, a deemed a good repository for the crowdsourced bathymetry. And so we've teamed up with the IHO, and we started a collaborative project to, um, to uh, improve the DCDB through the collection of crowdsourced bathymetry. And in the end, we, we plan on having ingest capabilities, uh, documentation, uh, display, and provide download access to users uh, worldwide of these data. Uh, there's also a, a crowdsourced bathymetry working group that is helping provide guidance and best practices for these kinds of projects. So the way we're going to collect crowdsourced bathymetry is through electronic charting systems. These are computer-based uh, navigational systems that are found on a high number of uh, seagoing vessels. As part of the regu regular operation, they collect uh, position data and can in incorporate data, depth data fairly easily. So by using these uh, systems and instrumentation that are already on the vessels, we can lower the cost and increase the, the number of participants in crowdsource bathymetry. So there's a couple of models that we've uh, established for getting these data to the DCDB. Uh, this model here shows uh, a data assembly center, which we're calling trusted nodes, that collect the data from the vessels and package it in a consistent format and manner for delivery to the, the, the DCDB. This model is, is good in the sense that it provides a central contact point for uh, handling potential issues or changes to the formats or, or process. Another model, which is more of a true crowdsource model, is where every mariner uploads their data directly to the DCDB. This model will provide less consistent data and perhaps lower quality or undocumented data. So at NOAA, we teamed up with uh, Rose Point Navigation to use their, uh, their ECS program, Coastal Explorer, to collect crowdsourced bathymetry data. And so now the, the users of their um, software now have the option to enable logging of CSB data. And when they do that, um, the, the software will then record position, depth, and time in a log file. And so these XYZT data from the ECS get saved as CSV files, and then a, just, a JSON metadata string providing additional information 
are both uploaded together to the D DCDB, where in, upon receipt, it's converted to a GeoJSON format. And so the GeoJSON format here, probably can't read too much there, but it embeds all the multi-beam, or sorry, all the uh, metadata that associated with the CSB project into the file itself. And these metadata fields include information about the vessel, the instrumentation, the system setup, and the software that's, that is used for collection. So here's an overview of our project flow. We have the, the two uh, collection models that are uploading their data via the web. We have some web services at the DCDB that uh, validate the files that have, had, that have been uploaded and they kick off some ingest scripts. The ingest scripts then convert the data as necessary, save the GeoJSON files to the archive, and then populate a metadata catalog. An additional process called extract, transform, and load then runs on the metadata catalog and generates uh, track line geometries for the data and populates our spatial database. And the sta spatial database then feeds our map viewers, our online map viewers, where these data can be discovered. Here's a, a screen grab of the viewer with uh, some CSB data off the southern coast of Rhode Island. And so to help our users narrow down and find the data that they, they're looking for, we have filter capabilities that include date ranges and platform names. And so once they narrow it down, then they can identify certain particular files. They can use the identify menu, which allows them to point click a, a specific location, draw a rectangle, draw a polygon, or input specific geographic bounds. And once identified, a, a little window pops up that shows, shows the number of files that they've uh, identified. If you further click on a file, it will yield the metadata for that file. It also, you see, it highlights the track of the, the file that you're actually looking at. And so the next thing we're going to do in, in, in the project is add da download capabilities to the map viewer. And so this is uh, where users can download the data and use it for their, uh, their research or industry needs. So I'm going to give a couple examples now of how NOAA's Office of Coast Survey are planning to use these data. But I want everybody to think about how, how you might be able to use these data. You know, Office of Coast Survey, they have a, a specific mission for um, nautical charting, but these data can be used for, for many other uses beyond that, uh, especially within interdisciplinary studies. So if anybody of you saw Patrick's talk a little earlier, he talked about the um, vessel traffic is used as one of the OCS's um, inputs to survey priority assessment. And so now with the crowdsource data, they'll get another, another uh, ingest or influx of, of data that can be used to, to monitor vessel traffic. But unlike the systems that they're monitoring now, the automa automatic identification system, the crowdsource data will come with a depth value, which will be of more use to them and allow them to uh, further use the data in their assessments. Another way that they're looking at the data is for bathymetric changes. So, you know, typically now they get a, a report from a mariner that says, hey, uh, this, the sounding's off or something with the chart, but that's a single point or single report from an individual mariner. With the crowdsource data, they'll be able to have multiple passes over the same area from, from potentially multiple vessels and at multiple times. So it uh, further increases the value of the data and allows them to perform their assessments better. And so lastly, with the Office of Coast Survey is, you know, they're always updating the nautical charts. And so determining the chart adequacy is, is, is a, a huge um, part of their, their process. And so with the crowdsource data, they'll be able to determine which parts of charts are, have become inadequate due to, you know, lack of confidence, lack of data, or potentially changing bathymetry. And so by using the crowdsource data, they'll be able to pinpoint these certain areas within the chart and, and allow them to update just that area without doing a full hydrographic survey over the charted area, which provides a huge cost savings for, for them. 
So to summarize, the crowdsourcing is emerging as an, a viable and inexpensive way to collect bathymetric data for, for many uses. Uh, our pilot project is proving successful at being able to get data uploaded from mariners with, with very little um, effort on the mariners' part. As this is an ongoing project, next we're gonna, like I said, provide download capabilities so users worldwide can download the data and reuse them for their own needs. Uh, we're gonna look into generate reporting, we'll have stats for uploads, uh, data uploads and data downloads. And then, as always, we're, we're looking to scale up the number of contributors, uh, trusted nodes, or even users. And with that, I thank you. I thank our partners. All right.